The following question is taken from element 7, Chemical and Biological Health Hazards and Risk Control, and is covered in 7.1, 7.2, 7.3 and 7.4. Outline the factors to be taken into account when undertaking an assessment of health risks from a hazardous substance to be used in the workplace. You have eight minutes to answer this question and your time starts now.
This question asked you to outline the factors to take into account when you're doing a cost assessment for substances to be used in the workplace. Your answers should have been structured around the hazardous nature of substances, the routes of entry and ill health effects, and appropriate control measures. Let's now look at each of these issues individually. One of the factors that we would need to take into account when doing a cost assessment is the hazardous nature of the substances that we're assessing. For instance, the substance classification as shown on the materials safety data sheet might say irritant, corrosive, toxic or carcinogenic. We'd also need to think about the form in which the substance is present in the workplace. For instance, solid, liquid, dust, fume, vapour or gas for chemical agents and fungi, bacteria, mould or viruses for biological hazards. We also need to consider the route of entry into the body and the ill health effects that could uh, ensue from that. For instance, hazardous substances could be inhaled if they're in the air, as in gases or fumes such as hardwood dust, leading to occupational asthma and nasal cancer. They could be absorbed through the skin, leading to acid burns and dermatitis. They could be ingested, generally through poor hygiene, when people have been working with hazardous substances and fail to wash their hands before eating. They could be injected into the body, for instance, finding a hypodermic needle when a cleaner is empty in a waste bin. And the ill health effects suffered will vary depending on the frequency of exposure, the duration of exposure and the levels of exposure. We also need to think about the control measures. To begin with, we would need to review existing control measures. We'd also need to consider eliminating the most hazardous substances or substituting them for something that is less hazardous. We could reduce the amount stored and used, use them in a less hazardous form, for instance using solid substances rather than the liquid form. We could partially or completely isolate processes to prevent exposure. We can reduce the numbers of people exposed to the hazardous substance. We can ventilate the area to ensure that any um, particles in the air are dispersed. We can use local exhaust ventilation or LEV which needs to be maintained and tested and inspected at 14 month intervals as required by the COSH regulations. And we could conduct health surveillance such as checking for dermatitis. And then lastly we would need to think about personal protective equipment such as per suitable gloves and eye protection and ensuring that the work activities are adequately monitored and supervised so that we know that our control measures are working as intended. We would also need to consider the fact that airborne substances with a workplace exposure limit should not exceed the workplace exposure limit or the well and that would involve having some air monitoring procedures and health surveillance.